Good morning. Today I'm very, very excited to show you this incredibly unique project that I honestly thought I would never show you on camera. This is one of those that I used to do many years ago and sell at a local shop and local shows and the <laughs> reaction to people, it exploded. And I started getting tons of donations of these beautiful marbles. This one I actually dug up here on the property, which I thought was so cool. It was filthy. I soaked it in baking soda and dish soap, and it still has some imperfections, which is what I love. And I know it's not old, old, but it's older. This is a 16 millimeter marble. And standard size is usually 17 to 18 and a half millimeter. So what I do is when I find the marble, I'll go and I'll choose colors that I really want to pull it, pull it together so you can see um, what's going on. So I chose some size eights, two different colored size 11s, two different colored 15s. Definitely gonna use these three millimeter rounds. I mean fire polish and then I have a whole bunch of things that we're going to use to decorate later but um, that might be part two and I'm kind of hoping I don't go into part three but this is a project that I can't rush there's no shortcuts it's extremely advanced you have to have knowledge of even count peyote square stitch herringbone netting and fringe we're going to slam that all into one to make something incredible. And I'm gonna show you how many times I tried this video because color wasn't showing up, the glare was bad, these were too dark, it looked stunning in there, but they were too dark to show you how to make our own bale, which we're going to do. So I ended up on this colorway. It's beautiful, it lets that marble inside there shine. So that's what we're gonna concentrate on today. So let me push it in there. We're gonna concentrate on getting it in secure on both sides so you can still see straight through that marble. That's what we're gonna do now. And then we'll come back and I'm gonna work off of this and start decorating. And I want some pieces that flow down like this. I want curves, I want, I know what I want in my head. That's the scariest part for me is just letting loose and you know, deciding colorways and all of that. And yes, I had a mess going yesterday. I had the video almost done and then I just did not like it. There was so much noise and traffic outside and all that stuff. So this is a 16 millimeter marble. To test fit it, what I do is I'll pick up a even account, an even number of size 11s to encircle this marble and I'm going to go down on zoom so I have 36 on three yards of fire line I'm going to center myself here and I ran it about halfway down and you don't have to measure just kind of eyeball it I'm going to fold it over pinch it like this with my fingers and then slip it right over the marble. And I want it to go like this, on and off, very comfortably. You still want a little bit of gap in there because we're gonna cinch this so tight and that's all we're gonna do for the moment. So I'm gonna turn it like this. So this working thread is coming out in this direction. We're just gonna come around and run through all these beads to form a circle. Yeah, everything felt very rushed yesterday. And, and like I said, ambulance were going by. It was so loud. And I was trying to talk over it then during editing. I said, that's unacceptable. I can't. Very, very loud. And that's how we get sometimes. Um, and it's okay. It's, you know, a little congested at time, certain times of the day here. So... Okay, so when we come up on that other thread, just bypass it. So we're gonna run right past there. And then I'll show you how I hold it so it's the most comfortable. And we will begin 
the peyote because I know it's a lot of thread to work with and I have to move this like this. There we go. So thank you for letting me address all of my issues that I had on beading away. I appreciate that very much. Um, I was very self-conscious about what's going on with my, you know, health and all of that stuff. So thank you for your patience and your kindness. Always. I always, always, always appreciate it. Okay. So I tuck that other thread like this behind the work in, in my hand and then I'm going to hold the ring and hold that working thread tight and then actually I'm going to use a different color so you'll be able to see even count is so easy so straightforward pick up 111 we're coming out this one skip the next go right into the one after that we'll do this all the way around picking up one skipping one and going through and don't worry if it gets a little loose because there are no knots in here um if we put a knot in there it would definitely show up and get in our way later as we do the other steps that we have to do so take your time me i'm going to pick up the pace do a couple stitches at a time here just because it's a lot of beads and it takes a little bit of time because I want to make sure I'm not missing anything that all that good stuff and I can't wear any jewelry when I do this project because there's so much thread going on it just tangles on everything so unfortunately it feels so weird to not have any of my jewelry on but it's just the easiest way for me and you because the piece getting ripped out of my hand every five seconds must be frustrating to watch so this was honestly a piece I was never going I've never taken a photo never showed it anywhere because I never thought I would ever be on camera doing it because it is one of those pieces that I just let go I let my uh, artistic side take over in whichever direction I go I love there are no mistakes you can rip out whatever you don't like to me that's fun that's exactly how I started making very unique one-of-a-kind pieces with found objects or recycled jewelry um, I would go to yard sales find old necklaces tear them apart and Re, um, reuse them in a different way and that I thought was so neat this one in particular is hands down my favorite though and you'll see as we go all right last stitch and you always know because you'll have those two together and this one sticking up right here is waiting for us to step up out of so we have our last 11 on we're going to skip this one right here jump into this beautiful apricot color and I'm gonna hit just one at a time and then I'm gonna pull for tension and then step right up through that turquoise one now we have to do one more round of peyote and so this is my favorite part we just fill in all these gaps with 111 so 111 will go right into this turquoise all the way around this should be very relaxing this should be fun if you know you start to get tired or whatever go walk away and rest it's one of those projects if you want to go digging for more treasures because I went through and found some really cool things that I thought would really highlight and not take away from the marble you can go less you can go more like I said this is just incredible so it's going to start to curve which you want so I'm going to start to put my thumb in and pull down like this and continue around and yes I'm going to be quiet this time because I missed a lot of counts before and a lot of just making silly little mistakes by adding one where it shouldn't have been different colors that kind of thing so I really want to pay attention today and 
get this beauty done. To me, the decorating is, is the exciting part. This is the critical part where we have to pay attention. Otherwise, that marble will slip right out and then that's it. <laughs> you have to start all over. Um, very hard to get the marble back in. Once we tighten it down, you either cut or you, that's it. I mean, I, once I mess up, it's no fun. All right, here we are. Last stitch and a step up. And I'm way, way, way too close. If I get too close, it's a little blurry. So I gotta be very careful. Last 11 through this turquoise and step up through that apricot color right there. And now we're ready for, I'm gonna use these beautiful little turquoise 15s. Each space now will get a 15. So I'm gonna pick up one 15 and go right through that 11. So we're just filling in the holes now and see how I'm turning it with my thumb like this and pinching it down and pulling and just keeping that other thread aside. Nice, tight tension now. Pick up one, go through the next. We'll do this all the way around. And then the next step, we turn right into netting, which I think is so cool. Incorporating different stitches like that, really, really fun. And we're gonna really have a lot of different stitches. I did a couple of, you know, mock versions and it started to turn into four, five different parts. It was just too much, too overcomplicated. So I said, I have to simplify it and go slower because I don't want to rush. And I also don't like saying, do this and I'll come back, do this and I'll come back because number one, I'll get lost and forget where I left off. And number two, um, it's just less confusing if I run it with you. And usually I can move a little bit quicker, but that time changed last night. Yeah, that's not fun. Falling back is, uh, it's actually easier than springing ahead. So I don't know. I don't feel that tired this morning, just a little bit. Almost there, guys. Here we are. So I am at that step up, and you can always tell because you'll have that indentation. See it in there? So we know we have to pick up that peach. 11. Apricot. I keep saying peach. And that new 15. I'm going to hold my thumb in there. Oh, my goodness. Okay, once we step out that new 15 right there, we will begin the netting. And yeah, I didn't want to go through there. Pull down. Oh, jeez. Spread these 15s out now. We're going to pick up five. We're turning it right into netting. So one, two. This is so important, this count. So if I'm quiet, that's why. So five, we're coming out this 15. We're going to skip this one and go right into this one. And it's going to make a curve. And I'll lay it on its side so you can see, just like this, a little curve right there. We'll do this all the way around. So five, skip one, go into the next. And I'm making sure I have five on there. Also, this is one that I would pick up the whole board, go sit and watch a show. So if I got stuck design-wise, I just sit there and, and see what fit, what didn't look good, what looked you know nice. 
it's one of those very, very relaxing projects and really rewarding after because you not only have a unique piece, it's just, I can't explain it. You're showcasing something like that was in the dirt. It was in the earth. It, I don't, I find that stuff really cool. I call it treasures and I find all kinds of good stuff up there, up near the brook, out back, old hardware, old stones. It's, it's incredible. The coolest thing I found was a really old nail from the 1800s. It's absolutely unbelievable. Two, three, four, five. Here's our last five. Okay, so here's our last stitch. Again, you can tell because we're missing that giant space right there. So we'll skip this 15, jump into this one, and then we'll step out the third. And if you don't have a beading all, kind of use your needle to pick and find that third bead. So we'll go up through one, two, three. There we go. And now we're ready for our second color. Kind of sweating it a little because I bumped the board yesterday. Everything went flying everywhere. I was picking up beads forever last night. And that's all I have left of those beautiful 15s temporarily. And I don't want to run out. Okay, so here we go. This is where we tighten it down and we're done on one side. Then we're going to repeat just what we did here on the other, except we're going to add one more row of peyote. So three 15s now. Find that middle or third bead from that next group and pull. And we'll do this all the way around. So one, two, three, middle or third. Go through there. Beautiful. And you can see it's starting to have that design, that shape that I want. And definitely you can go more intricate with the designs. Um, you let your creativity go. Again, this is just my, how I want this one to look. And I wanted to share with you how one stitch can easily be converted into the next. It's just neat. It's a really neat, fun thing. So I hope you all enjoy. I know we've done a bunch of things like that with uh, unusual objects. The things that I'm obsessed with are just bizarre. <laughs> Truly. Uh, skeleton keys, you know, that kind of thing all those old beautiful things that I think are just beautiful as a necklace, a piece of art. All right, here's our last three. So we're gonna make sure we finish by going through that little 15 and then those new three that we just put on. So a total of four. Now we have to reinforce, cause see this movement, all of this movement over here, we do not want that. So we have to run around when we do this, make sure you go through that little 15 plus the three new, new ones, excuse me. So down through there. And always pick up that little one. Otherwise you'll have that piece of thread showing over the work and start to pull down, use a lot of force. All right, it wants to grab a whole bunch. Oh, wow. I've never had to grab that many before, but okay, I'm gonna just run with it. Keep that other thread out of the way as we do this. So lots of threads going on, but worth it. I mean, it is something that will make our life easier after. So we're not crisscrossing across the work constantly. We'll always have one piece of thread on one side and one piece on the other. All right, I'm very, very secure right now. 
So I'm going to pull down and all I'm going to do is step up. So we'll be in position to add the bail if we have time. If not, we'll still be ready after. So I'm coming out this little 15 right here. We're going to move up through these two turquoise right here. Okay, three. We'll go up all three. It's doing what it wants this morning. And step out that apricot right there. And that is exactly where we're going to stay. So we'll set that thread aside, attach a needle, flip the work over, attach a needle to the other thread, and we'll begin the same process on the other side. Yeah, yesterday, um, there's a hill. I know I've shown pictures or talked about it before. I'm right-handed, so I'm just going to flip this whole piece over like this so that thread's not in my way. This is the only hard part. We have nowhere to put our thumb. We can't go through here and put our thumb because it's too tight, and not even my pinky will fit in there. So I'm going to have to hold it a little differently, and I'll try to press it against my nail so you can see. And before I finish my story, I know I started. Make sure you're sticking out of a bead that is sticking out up like this you don't want to be down in there if you are down in a lower bead just work your thread right up so you're in an up bead in position to go ahead and add our round of peyote using the turquoise 11s so we're going to go and fill in each space now with one of those beautiful 11s i forgot i had a whole bunch of thread on here Oh my gosh, my fingers are killing me. I put numbing cream on this morning and everything and still just so, so painful. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's making me sweat. <laughs> and it's 29 degrees out. Anyway, there's this huge hill right in the middle. I was in the middle of putting the marble in very constant. I was concentrating heavily and somebody decided to do a massive burnout, which I have nicknamed that hill burnout hill. People go up it and get squirrely. It, to me, it's hilarious. It's scary sometimes because I don't want anybody to get hurt, obviously, but there's just something about that hill. It's so steep. They just, I mean, they step on the gas and <laughs> lay some rubber. I mean, it is intense. It's pretty um interesting to watch. It reminds me of something my father would have done. <laughs> These are stories I shouldn't share, but no, uh, I used to love when my dad did burnouts. He had a very old, uh, I think either Chevelle or Firebird, I forget, but a Camaro, that's what he had. Oh my goodness. And I'd say, go faster, dad, do a burnout, dad. And he did. And it make, it just made me crack up. I don't know why. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. We're getting around and then we'll do the marble part. So that's the part where we're going to pop it in. So here we are getting ready to finish up one more stitch right through here. And then we'll step up through that turquoise that is sticking out right there. And now we're ready to pop that marble in. Now press it down with just a little bit of force to start. So see how I'm just pressing it in, keeping the other thread over there and then wrap and hold tight. Make sure I press down on the work. All right, there we go. Beautiful. So far, I'm not even gonna jinx it. All right, where did I? All right, so I'm going to go back to the turquoise 15s. 
I don't want the 11s getting me all confused. We're going to fill in each space now. I know it's turquoise, the same color on the same color there. So you know what? I'll do this matte. We'll put a 15 in to each turquoise bead. We are just cinching it down now. And I'm not going to let go. I'm not going to look back. I'm just going to keep filling in each space. I'm going to spread this out some more. I can't believe how fast time goes by. I just glanced up to make sure I was in frame and time's ticking. I don't like that. And that's what is frustrating. I wish I could do at least an hour, come back and do another one, and then we would be done. They do not take long. Um, for me, a full-blown piece usually takes two hours. So they don't take long because once you get the rhythm down, once you get the idea, it's very, very fast moving and fun. This part is just, you know, like I said, very important that we get it locked in there. So hang on. Everything's slipping and sliding all over. Threads are everywhere, I know. Don't get frustrated. Just, I always say lean back, relax. <laughs> I always say that in my head when I get stressed out, lean back and relax, take a breath and keep going. This should not be a stressful project for you guys. All right, we're already there to the part where we're going to quickly turn it into netting and then we'll start, it'll start securing and we won't have to hold on so tight. Last stitch, here's my last 15 through this 11, right up through that beautiful 15. And press, everything's still moving around quite a bit. Like I said, don't worry, we're take, taking care of that right now. So pick up five 15s, I'm gonna use the turquoise just so you can see, three, four, five. Skip this one and go right into this one right here, okay? Make that little curve like we did on the other side. Skip one, go into the next. Okay, beautiful. And I'm sorry I have to hold it at this weird angle, but if not, if I let go, I'm not even going to show you what will happen because it will pop right out, and I don't want that to happen. So I have to hold on. One, two, three, four, five. Skip one. Go into the next. We'll do this all the way around. It will not take long because of the netting. Four, five. It moves a lot quicker than uh, the peyote. It just gets a little harder to see, a little tighter in there. Okay, five, skip one, go into that little guy right there. Almost there. Boy, you can tell I'm concentrating when I'm quiet. I don't want to make those same errors that I kept making because I was talking too much <laughs> and it kept throwing my count off and then I went back to sew it up, seal it and I noticed a few problems and I was like, oh no. All right, we're at the last stitch. We have to go down, pick up that little 15. I'm gonna wiggle my way through there, that little one to close up that area, pull and kind of push it forward like this because we hit it on an angle. And now step up again through that third one, two, three, 15, right there. Now we'll pick up three. I'm gonna go back to this matte. This is one of my favorite colors, um, aluminum. Three 15s, 
find the middle. Sometimes you get lucky and it's sticking right up like that of that next group and start really pulling down now. So three, and right through. Oh goodness, it's tight in there. Which you want, but very hard for me to move along here. One, two, three. If you have trouble, pick at it. Actually, I can't see a single thing and I need my, I should always keep this on hand. There we go. I'm gonna make sure I didn't have six on there too. So find that middle bead. Go ahead and pull at it like I just did. You're not gonna hurt anything. You need to be able to see where you're going. So, and right now I can't. So I'm gonna pull at it. Make sure I have three, which I did not. And go through that middle. All right, I have to start pulling a little bit harder here. You'll be able to feel if the tension isn't right, if it starts to get too loose. Trust me. All right. Apparently, it's going to be a little stubborn this morning. One, two, three. It's deep down in there. There we go. Pull. One, two, three. Keep going around. There we go, we're almost there. And then we just have to reinforce and I'll show you where to step out on this side and then we'll be done with this part and then we can come back and decorate. The only bad thing is I have to drop this file off somewhere and then wait for it to upload and then come back and do another one because the iPad only holds so much information. It's a little frustrating. And then by that time I'm either tired or off doing something okay 315's last stitch make sure we go through this 15 to finish the round and it's going to be very very tight do not slip just get in there however you can i want to make sure i picked up just one great all right that went really smooth i'm very happy so now all we have to do is start pulling down look at that press and pull look at how pretty okay we just have to go tighten up so again because it's too loose through the three always pick up that little one that's down tuck down in there i will not make you watch me do this whole reinforcing part that's just boring and i'm gonna wrap and pull like this through three. I'll just show you one more time and then I'll show you where we're going to both be stepping out of the same area right here. When you're done, which I'm going to go off camera, finish going around, this is where you'll step out. That little 15 that squished right in between those two um, threes right there, those three sets of 11s. Separate out there on that side. We already know where we're at here because we're going to begin right away with the bail and get that part over with when we come back. So I hope you enjoyed this. I had a blast. Everything turned out perfect. And look at how gorgeous. I mean, this is in there rock solid. It is not going to move. But we can still see very, very beautifully through there. I am in love. Okay, so we'll see you soon. Take care.